Hey, what's going on guys and gals? Chef PV again. Uh, we're here again. We're going to talk about the IMU-F from Helio RC. Uh, I wanted to do a video about some tips and tricks about what I learned from installing it the first time. Uh, there was, there's great documentation, just like everything. There's, they're trying to do their best to make sure documentation is there. Uh, but as fast as things move and with little small you know, things being brought up here and there, uh, I just wanted to kind of give my, my thoughts and my feelings on um, the best way to go about installing it and some of the things you need to look for. So um, first off, the spring IMU uh, from Helio RC, brand new hardware here. Uh, they're using F4, F3 processors. If you've seen any of my videos, the F3 is filtering all the data before it hits the F4 uh, and the gyro and all that stuff. So a really new way of looking at uh, flight control data and, and, and pulling it in for what we're doing. Um, really cool thing is there's really not a lot out there like it um, so your experience on it is going to be pretty pretty interesting um, i'll tell you this you're not going to get the smoothest quad out of just dropping this in there necessarily uh, if you have other butterfly builds that you've uh, already put butterfly on an f4 or an f3 you're probably going to experience an out the box feel for those a little bit better um, only because what you're feeling in the butterfly on that side is it's it's the filtering, it's different filtering, right? You're already doing some filtering, so the change is not that, in, that in, incredibly different. It's just basically adding butter. It's just buttering it up. Um, which brings me to the thing. Helio RC and Butterflight are two separate entities. Um, Kaylin, who used to be on Raceflight and everybody knows, and before we get into all that, who cares? Uh, moved over from Raceflight and was starting to contribute the fast Kalman stuff and all that stuff to Betaflight. Well, Betaflight um, was also going through some changes, some things are going on, and instead of being a full-time contributor only to Betaflight, Kalen decided that he wanted to contribute in other areas. And he and his team, of Sean, Tim, and Kalen, um, Sean being the principal partner and, and Kalen and Tim being partners, uh, started Helio RC and they started looking at this flight controller and developing hardware. So they developed the Helio RC hardware. So that's Helio RC. Uh, loose transistor in APOC from the developer side split off and forked the beta flight into Butterfly. This was because the fast Kalman's and all those things were being put on hold and frozen and some changes were being done. Uh, and it, in regard to just wanting to be, you know, move forward with some stuff that wasn't currently being moved forward with. So they split and they forked. They asked Kalen and, you know, fast Kalman's and all that is Kalen, I believe, as, as far as his, I should, I'm not 100% right, but I, I think it's his, his thing. So, you know, he's contributing in that area. So Helio RC is making recommendations on firmwares not just at Butterfly, they have hardware that is agnostic. Um, Helio RC hardware should be able to run on anything that anybody wants to write code for it. Uh, that's the whole point, right? So it's not like the race flight hardware and software or the KISS hardware and software that's not agnostic. They're proprietary. Uh, you have to have you know, a race flight one revolt to, or race flight revolt to run race flight one. You have to have a KISS flight controller to run KISS software, uh, flight software. So with the Helio RC, you don't. I mean, there's no, it's agnostic as well. Um, but the new revolutionary, I, you know, I am, I am FU, or I am UF, uh, F3 filtering with the F4 off to the side, doing all the data and all the control processing, um, really makes for a different experience. So you're gonna have this butterfly, really great revolt, or your really buttery quads that are already tuned. You're gonna drop this in, and more than likely, you're gonna have some oscillations and stuff. You're gonna have to retune. Um, and I'm starting to learn the new retune. So that's where this kind of comes in is I'm trying to give some tips and tricks. So I'm not gonna get into the tuning side. That's gonna come in further videos once I get my quad tuned the way I want it. Um, but the resolution of feel is completely, it's it's 100% better, if not 1000% better in this than anything I've flown. I feel my quad reacting in a different way. So what we're gonna start with is opening it up. So let's do it. All right. So what you're gonna notice off the bat whenever you open this thing up is there's the board, there's your gummy. That's the one you can eat. And here are the other gummies. So really cool thing is these gummies actually, first of all, these gummies are the best gummies I've ever seen. They're low profile. Yeah, 
very low profile. So when they're on there and everything's buttoned up, it's not too much for a nylon standoff, actually. They fit nicely. So that was really cool. I thought that the gummies, for once, were the right size, so I don't have to get extra long screws. So here's our gummy for our mouth for us to eat. So we're going to pop this in while we take a look at this board. Mmm, delicious. All right, so the other thing you'll notice is that's all that come in the package. Gummies, the gummy in my mouth, and the board. So it does have a ESC and PDB uh, Molex plug. The problem is it doesn't come with it. And the other problem is it's an 8-pin plug. It's an 8-pin plug, but it's also an 8-pin plug that is one of two different sizes that come in the same size header. So you may or may not actually have these headers already made or already in your bin. What I mean by that is I'll show you the difference between two 8 pins. So what I'll show you is uh, on this screen now you see these two header pins and they basically are the exact same size. However, one's an 8 pin header and one is a six pin header. So it's easy to see how if you put the wrong header, you could actually smash the pins inside the, the connector and actually ruin the board. And more so, the reason I show this is if you use these fat headers and you stick them into a smaller header, they'll actually fit. But what, what will happen is they will not actually connect into the port and actually get you a signal. So I've actually already helped myself and another person who had a very similar issue where their signal pins were too big and when they pushed them in, they were only getting contact on two of the pins, not on all four. Well, come to find out, like I did, they built their own header and they went ahead and used two fat ones. So it just didn't work. So if you're going to build your own, out of your box, make sure you use the right header pins, okay? So there was one thing I wanted to quickly uh, add in. Uh, if you are connecting your VBAT, which I think everybody should, connect your VBAT pads, and if you are, you do not at all need to bridge. In fact, do not ever bridge either connector if you're using VBAT plugged in over here. Uh, if you have VBAT running, that VBAT power is actually going to power the 5-volt regulator for you. So when you wire your board, connect 5 volts to it as normal, connect your VBAT for your VBAT sensor, but that VBAT sensor on this board, unlike others, will power all of the 5-volt rails for you. You do not need to bridge the 5-volt rail, okay? So the only thing you would need to do is if you wanted VBAT power on any of them, you could bridge the VBAT but do not bridge five volts and have the VBAT power lead plugged in. Okay, fly safe, fly smart. <laughs>